Time to get professional. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to DG360. We were just talking about Starlink. If you missed that video, go check out that card. And we're 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 getting sci-fi. We're getting we're getting to the future. And I, I love talking about the future. And this next video that I'm going to show to you guys is a possible candidate for a Mars habitat. I want you guys to watch a little bit of this, and we're going to talk about going to Mars afterwards. Half a century ago, we took our first step on the surface of the moon. Today, there is renewed passion to explore for our next human endeavor. Mars, the red planet, further than any human has ever been. We face many challenges, remoteness, no livable atmosphere, high radiation. Oh, that doesn't look threatening at all. I can't wait. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to go to Mars. Wait a second. I changed my mind. I'm not going to Mars anymore. <laughs> I'm like, what? wait, 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 wait. Why are we going to Mars again? <laughs> like, if you see that, if you see that at some point, you have to ask yourself, like, why? Why exactly do I'm just, I'm just going to do it? Because if I'm just going to do it, I think I might just pass. I'm just going to stay home. And uh, I, I don't like I don't like what I'm seeing on the horizon there dust storms and extremely low temperatures before any humans set foot on Mars we must first design a protective shelter we will protect our astronauts from radiation with a thick 3d printed shell structure using Martian regolith which works wait till you see this this looks so cool what they're with with the, this design that they have for the habitats on Mars it's just something that actually exists right now great in compression but does not perform well under tension Oh. To overcome this shortfall, we have chosen to construct the pressure retaining parts of the habitat from lightweight inflatable pods. They will be made out of high precision engineered composites that are prefabricated on Earth. Their elliptoid geometry will be able to mitigate the pressure differences whilst optimizing spatial planning. To create the base on Mars, we will use a two phase approach. In phase one, an ecosystem of 3D printing robots will arrive months in advance of any human explorer. They will construct the protective shield for the base by adopting a modular robotic swarm strategy, a plan that allows for redundancies and enhances the odds for success. Intelligent autonomous robots will have interchangeable roles, from battery storage to scout rovers, logistics to excavational and even 3D printing units, all integrated with multiple cameras and sensors for navigation. They can reconfigure themselves for a multitude of purposes, ensuring prolonged usage beyond the initial build phases. The smallest configuration is the one-wheeled scout rover that uses ultrasonic scanning to analyze the Martian surface to determine the best regions for obtaining optimum regolith. The digger receives the location coordinates and then excavates the Martian soil. It then delivers the payload to the refining assemblies. Here, large chunks of Martian regolith can be processed down to a finer grain and then delivered to the melter robots in situ. They then use concentrated microwaves to melt the regolith and extrude through the 3D printing nozzle. The shell is autonomously 3D printed, layer by layer, over several months by the robotic system. In the next phase, all right, that is so cool if that actually can work like that. I'm so sorry, but like that is so damn cool if it actually would work like that. I know there's going to be something in the way that causes some type of technical problem, but like to actually have this be the possibility of working makes me really excited. Like just seeing this, I know we have a visual here. This is a video describing how it's going to be. Of course, there might be some types of problems, but the fact that this is designed and being talked about with people at NASA, and this is one of the uh, design concepts that will be the future of how Mars habitats happen. I love it. I love, I love it. Like I absolutely love what I'm seeing here that this is being talked about. The first astronauts arrive with the habitation units, equipment, and supplies. The robots now take on their second life roles to aid the next phase. They come together to make flexible mobile platforms that can carry the payload from the loading zone to the base. The convoy begins its journey across the Martian <laughs> surface to the habitat site. The build commences with a connector module placed underneath the protective shield and ready for inflation. The module then unfolds and self-inflates into its final form. 
the habitation units are then placed into position. You know, and, and, and OG brings up a really good point here, and I want to talk a little bit about it. OG says, all this to make Mars like Earth, can we not make Earth like Earth? And I understand where he's coming from. I really do. We're screwing up the Earth, the Australian fires, everything that's going on, all the plastic from the oceans. We've been talking about this a long time. We're in some serious trouble and do need to focus on the Earth. But I think the one thing that I take away from this when I watch videos like this and I see that this could be a possible future is that holy god we can get off the planet in case you know we're on our path to self-destruction maybe there's a future for humanity the exploration in us because every single one of us have that one little that's the, I think the thing that reunites us as a species is this exploration gene inside of us we all are explorers we all want to see what we can't see we all strive to go to a the, the, this journey to, to find a place where we're in a, a different reality, like to see the impossible happen, to make the impossible become a reality, to explore vast sections of the universe. Like, I think that that speaks to the explorer in us. You know, I think you've seen that in, in the history of the human species where we like to go out and we like to discover it's in our genetics, it's in our DNA. So to see if this actually can work, Right. I think is where the juice of this is at. Like if this could work, then we could do this on other planets. I think that's what what it speaks to as far as I'm concerned. Uh, of course, we do need to fix the Earth, by the way. <laughs> OG's right. And sequentially inflated to form the completed pressurized environments. The circular layout of the habitat ensures continuous accessibility of the habitat in the event of a catastrophic failure. Each connector module houses three integrated environmental control life support systems, delivering essential services like power, water, data, and oxygen to all the habitation units. A circular conduit delivers these services to multiple endpoints in each pod. The base will be remotely powered by two nuclear kilo power reactors and a solar farm, located what? a safe distance away from the base. In the next stage, the astronauts will construct and install a flat pack rail-based racking system capable of connecting to the distribution system, <laughs> enabling spaces to reconfigure according to their spatial needs. This modular and radical design principle has been adopted for all the habitat pods, ensuring multi-use, reconfigurable environments. A marsh now, if we could just convert this, like Matt says, to nanotechnology and have this happen on my head so that we can grow follicles and hair again on my head in the same manner in which they're constructing the Mars habitat. <laughs> Look at this, man. This is insane. In base should not just be a habitat. It is home for the astronauts. Each pod expresses its own identity, quality, and character. A highly functional design which places the human experience at the core. Spaces include a state-of-the-art research laboratory, a hydroponic greenhouse, a fully equipped workshop with digital fabrication facilities, the sleeping quarters with gym and a Mars virus, which eventually goes in as a parasite and turns all the crew members into stark raving mad lunatics. I, I feel it. I feel like that could be a possibility. Facilities and immersive virtual reality platform. We believe that the key to success of human habitation on Mars is the health and well-being of its residents. Creating a place where work life and living combine holistically to ensure they feel connected to each other, to themselves, and somehow to their distant home. That looks badass. That just looks badass, man. That's brought to like this looks bad ass. Thank you, Dice. Welcome to the family, dude. There's mom twirling the knives on the new alert. Perfect ending for this video. Let us know what you think in the comments down below, guys. I really, really, really want this to happen. Like every part of me wants this to happen so badly. When I saw this video, it just brought all this positivity. And I'm like, dude, let's just do it. Let's go. Between Elon Musk wanting to make this a mission, you know, to go to Mars and between what I'm seeing here, let's just do it. Let's just get this done. I want to see this in my lifetime. I believe I will. I'm saying 2025, 2026. I think I think we're going to see it. I want to see it happen. I will feel so much better if we can make this happen. Like I can die happier. Of course, I'll be upset because I'll realize at some point if we can get this, then we'll have longer lifespans and I will not enjoy the extra benefit of a few hundred more years. 
and I will get depressed again. But anyway, <laughs> let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and I will see you guys on the next vid. Today's video has been brought to you by the generous patrons of DG360 who make continued content possible. DG360 patrons enjoy monthly giveaways like Star Citizen packages, Steam gift cards, and any game that you want giveaways. Please consider donating $1 if in any way you enjoy DG360 content. And these difficult times where independent content creation is under attack from the FTC and left to die by YouTube, it's nice to know that I'm appreciated.